a lot of people look at putting solar panels on the roof as, well, just something you don't do or something they wouldn't do or as hazardous, which <laughs> if you do it alone, as you'll soon see, it could be. But, that, you know, they're concerned about a lot of different things, penetrating through the roof and all that kind of stuff. And I want to start this video by saying that while I think those concerns are valid, I also think there are a lot of concerns with putting them on the ground. I'm going to go into why I put solar panels on the roof of my cabin and the harrowing, crazy, risky <laughs> way I got them up there, mostly by myself, but how it worked out in the end. And I'm going to address some of the comments I've seen about why people don't put them on the roof and kind of explain my thoughts on those. So stick with me. First of all, back in the summer of 2010, I put in three ground mount solar panels. And my original intent was to actually add to that solar array. However, you know, we're not all wealthy people and I certainly wasn't. I had a good job, but I didn't make that much money that I could just go buy panels. And in those days, they were about a dollar a watt. So a 205 watt solar panel was about $205. And, you know, today people are upset when they can't get a solar panel much under 35 cents a watt. So imagine the days of buying them at a buck a watt or more. Well, I couldn't afford to spend another six, $700 on solar panels and then mounting means back in late 2010, let alone 2011, 2012, or, or frankly, 2013. And I moved into my cabin full time in the summer of 2013 and then lived with the 615 watts of solar I had on those ground mount panels. That meant I ran a generator a lot because when I originally built the system, I didn't really build it to live there. That wasn't my plan. I, I had no intention of moving into my cabin in the woods. It was going to be a retreat for us, a, a vacation spot, a hunting cabin, just a place to go have fun on the weekends and maybe spend a week here and there. So I didn't really plan on living there. I will also say that the journey of building the cabin was a lot of the allure. I enjoyed the idea of building a cabin in the woods. I always wanted to do that. So I didn't put in 60 kilowatts of solar power because frankly, I didn't need it and I couldn't afford it. Late summer of 2013, I moved into the cabin. A job had come up in the area that was for a company I wanted to work for. And I decided to go ahead and move up to the cabin and live there while working in the area. And we'd kind of figure things out as we went, right? So, at the end of 2013, I converted my system from 12 volts to 24 volts because by then I'd learned it was far more efficient. Smaller cables, things like that. Better to run a 24 volt system. So I converted it to 24 volts. I got four more batteries, so I now had 12 golf cart batteries and I installed a six kilowatt backup generator, the Generac EcoGen. It's a propane generator that actually has to be tied to your off-grid power system in order for it to work properly. I'm sure there's ways around that, but in this case, you gotta do things like tie the grounds together and all that kind of stuff. And it's a two-wire start, so I was able to use a Magnum Research AutoGen start switch so that if my power dropped quite a bit, the generator would kick on and protect my batteries. I lived up at the cabin for just over a year by myself on that power. And the first thing that became very evident to me was I was running my generator a lot. In fact, in the winter, I was running my generator about two hours every morning and two hours every evening. And if I wanted to watch television, use the internet, whatever, anything that used up a lot of power, I would go out, fire up the generator because I hadn't put a switch in that I could turn it on inside the cabin. So I had to go out sometimes in two feet of snow and turn the generator on, run it for a couple hours, turn it off, go to bed. And that became pretty monotonous. And obviously I did not have enough solar. So I began investigating what I could do to improve my system and really get it to where I had enough solar. But the problem at the time was I couldn't find any more of those 205 watt solar panels. They just didn't seem to exist. Solar panels were getting bigger and better and bigger and better faster than you can imagine. Kind of like the old days in the computer world where every 18 months computers were twice as fast and you needed to upgrade everything. Well, solar power was doing the same thing. So even though I'd put in a midnight solar combiner box that I could put six strings of those panels in, well, I couldn't get the panels. So that combiner box kind of became silly at that point, frankly. It had one solar array going into it and that was it. 
I thought I'd planned ahead. I hadn't counted on solar panels changing that much. So I did my research and by 2017, I bought six 305 watt solar panels and I decided, okay, I'm gonna put these on the roof. And the first thing I will tell you is the reason I chose to put them on the roof was because of real estate. Putting large solar arrays on the ground has its drawbacks. One of them is it takes up space on the ground. It means you gotta look at it all the time. It, it's in your way, it, it takes up your yard. And where I was, there's free range cattle and cattle love to rub their backs up against things. <laughs> Bears like to lick the dew off of your dishes and panels and things and maybe scratch them up a little bit too. So having panels on the ground is okay as long as you get them up high enough. And my solar array that I had on the ground, though it had been moved once or twice by animals, it was still fine. I kept it tight enough that unless a cow was really rubbing up against it, it wouldn't move. But those kind of things made me realize that I'd be far better off putting those panels on my roof. Now, I knew there were gonna be drawbacks, but I wasn't worried about roof penetrations. Come on, people put chimneys through their roofs, they put vents in their roofs, they put all kinds of things in their roofs, and as long as you do it correctly, leaking isn't a problem. And I will tell you, since I put those panels in, which was about seven years ago, well, I haven't had a single leak. Knock on wood, right? But no, seriously, I haven't had any issues with regards to leaking through the roof. Penetrations, if done correctly and sealed properly, should last a very, very long time, and I'm experiencing that now, no issues there. The only actual issue that I have with those panels, well, let, let me get back to putting the panels in, and I'll tell you about the issues I had here a little bit later. So my first mission, of course, was to figure out how I was gonna mount those panels on the roof. I'd never done it before. So I did my research and I found that Platt Electric had the kind of mounts I would need. These were an L-bracket style aluminum mounting bracket that you screwed into the roof and they had rubber grommets and you could seal them, which I did with silicone. Okay, no problem. I've got a deck roof now so I can throw a ladder up on there, climb up on my roof and put these rails up. Well, that's what I did. And putting the rails up, the first rail, the lower rail, well, that wasn't really a challenge, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, you're, you're just a couple feet up the roof from the deck roof, so no problem at all. But the next rail, which was about four feet higher, well, that posed some challenges. So I had to use a roof ladder with a hook, and I got that upper rail put on. I, I only installed half of the system at first, so I had two 10-foot rails installed about four feet apart. Okay, got the rails on. Now, how am I gonna get my panels on the roof? I'm alone, folks. I'm alone out there, and at the time, well, <laughs> I think I had one neighbor that had moved in 100 yards from me, so I knew that there was somebody out there, but otherwise, my next nearest neighbor's a half a mile away. And when you're doing these kinds of things unless you're paying somebody else to do it well you got to figure it out yourself and that's the kind of thing I'm gonna do I don't know everything I'm no expert but I will figure it out and make it work that's kind of my forte making things work so I gave it some thought I thought you know if I could just push a solar panel up the ladder and then set it on the deck roof without it sliding off which Sometimes that was a challenge. And then I could get it over to the rails and pick it up and set it on the rails off the deck roof. Then I could get my panels up there. What's well, true, except the one thing I hadn't considered. I only have two hands. And I didn't have one in a brace then, but I only have two hands. And so when you pick that panel up and you get it up on those two rails so that you can install it, the problem is you're now trying to hold that solar panel with your two hands and somehow you gotta figure out how to get the hardware into the rails and, and secure it enough so that, that that panel that you just put up didn't just fall off the roof. <laughs> That's where some backwoods engineering came in. After a whole lot of trial and error, and I gotta tell you, a lot of cussing and swearing too, I finally decided that what I could do, and believe it or not, this actually worked, though it was pretty sketchy, I could take a ratchet strap and wrap it around my solar panel and through the top rail. And then as I ratcheted up that ratchet strap, it would slowly shift that solar panel up a little bit higher to the height that I needed it at, and then it would hold it in place. And believe it or not, that worked. It was pretty sketchy, very, very risky, but I managed to get that first solar panel placed and secured. 
Once I did that, I kind of had it figured out, and it was now just a matter of pushing another solar panel up the ladder onto the roof over on the deck, and then climbing up onto the deck, and then lifting that solar panel into place, and then frankly somehow, and I'm still not exactly sure how, wrapping a ratchet strap around the panel and around the top rail on the roof without dropping the solar panel on the ground or knocking yourself off. <laughs> I hope you get the idea here. This was really crazy, but it was working. And I was able to get three solar panels installed that way. But then I ran into a problem. I had those three panels secured to the roof, but I couldn't figure out how I was gonna do that without the deck roof there to stand on or the porch roof to stand on because the next panels would now span over the open airspace that the ladder was sitting on. And I was thinking, well, maybe I could push a panel up onto the roof and hold it there while trying to get a ratchet strap on, all the while standing on a ladder. And believe it or not, I tried that. Well, that wasn't gonna work. And having nearly fell off the ladder a couple times and nearly dropping solar panels a couple times, I opted to take a break, not try to install those, get a couple panels running so that at least I'd have some power going to my new charge controller and wait and see what I could do. Fortunately for me, I was able to con my neighbor, and I say con because, well, he's a good kid. So thank you, Eric, by the way, his name's also Eric, to come up and help me so that, uh, well, I, I didn't fall off a ladder or drop solar panels, and I think falling off would have been worse than dropping a solar panel, but frankly, at the price of those solar panels, which were probably still around a dollar a watt, you're talking over $300 a panel, and I needed to install three of them. Now, if you look at my roof today, you're going to notice some mistakes I made. If you look carefully enough, you will notice that those rails stick a little bit far out on the right side of my solar array. Well, that's because when I first started, I thought I could space those panels out evenly, and my main concern was that I needed to provide enough space, in theory, for a firefighter to climb up on either end of the roof. That's something they tell you you need to do, which makes perfect sense. So I needed to try and shift my panels enough right that I could get enough room for a firefighter or somebody to climb up on the roof to the left of the panels. And I also wanted to try to install the panels as much over the deck roof as I could because it was the only way I was gonna get them on by myself. Well, by the time I got help and could get those last three panels on, I didn't have a choice but to put them where they were because the type of mounting hardware that I had clamps two panels not just one. So you have like a bolt with a T bracket on it and you put that first panel in and once it's in, you take your second panel and you butt it up to the first and you have to loosen each one of those T nuts off and then tighten it back down on both panels. So you have two panels with a T nut over them like this. Well, I gotta tell you, that's difficult to do when you've installed the first panel but if you remove those T nuts off of one side, guess what? it wants to fall. So I had to strap that first panel up with a ratchet strap and then use another ratchet strap to haul that second panel into place and hold it in place while I was able to loosen those nuts, slide the panel over under the pressure of the ratchet strap, which meant you had to kind of loosen it. And if you know anything about ratchet straps, once you loosen them, they go bang and everything falls. So you had to try to hold on to the solar panel, pop the ratchet strap, then tighten the ratchet strap back up again. And you can get the picture, right? It ain't exactly something you want to do alone. But I got the first three up, and then Eric and I got the second three up, got them in place, and got them installed. Do I recommend doing it yourself? No, I do not. But I gotta be honest with you. Sometimes it's just you and the world, and you gotta figure it out. Sometimes, the best way, which is to get help, isn't available for you. Or to pay someone else, maybe that's not available. And you gotta figure it out yourself. Now a lot of people would say, well then just put them on the ground. But I had my reasons for putting them on the roof. And to be honest, I said earlier I would tell you what issues I've had with them. The only real issue that I've had with those panels on the roof is actually snow. And the reason snow is an issue because that roof's a 12-12 pitch. That means it's 45 degrees, and by the way, it's facing due south. The problem is the deck roof is about three and a half 12, and the snow can build up on the deck roof, and when it builds up on the solar panels and it starts to slough off, it runs into the snow on the deck roof, and it begins to build up snow up on those panels. And if I'm not there because I no longer live there full time, although I am there 
a lot. I'm there every other week, typically, although, you know, this guy here is kind of holding me back right now. You may have noticed, though, it's no longer in the other splint. It's in a removable one, so we're making progress. But that snow load is the only issue I have. And it's something that I mentioned in my last video about ground mount versus roof mount, which I'll put in the description below. And that is that while the ground mount panels have their benefits, the roof mount panels have theirs. The ground mount panels, I can tilt them so that they won't get a snow load. And I had envisioned doing the same thing with my roof mounted panels. I just never managed to come up with a way to do it. I still think it would be a good idea because in the winter, if I could tilt those panels up to about 63 degrees, well, guess what? They would slough the snow off better, I think, but you'd still get a big buildup on that deck roof. And that is one of my challenges. Unless I get up there and I get that snow off of that deck roof often enough to keep it from building up and covering those solar panels and then building up ice under it, which makes it even harder to get rid of, then it's going to build up and they're going to get covered. So the ground mount panels are going to produce even when those roof mounted panels don't. But other than that issue, frankly, those roof mounted panels do very, very well. So yes, it's kind of bad in the sense that that time of year when you need your solar panels the most, those panels can be taken out just by a heavy snow load. On the other hand, they produce so well the rest of the time that life is good. And I think if I were to come up with a better way to, to get the snow off the roof, maybe some heated strips run by solar, maybe that problem wouldn't be an issue for me. But for now, it kind of is. So that's about it. That's the only issue I have other than getting them up there. Anyway, folks, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> no, seriously, that is exactly how I got those panels on the roof. It was very risky, but I managed to survive. And thanks to a little bit of help, I got the last three up without falling off the roof. So I'm here to tell you about it today. But don't overlook the possibility of putting solar panels on the roof. There are benefits to doing that. I think it can be a great solution in certain circumstances. Certainly in mine, it was. Would I like more ground mounted panels? I don't want to look at them. So no, I really don't want more ground mounted panels. In fact, I would put my ground mounted panels up higher and get them out of the way. Maybe put them on top of the deck roof somewhere else, whatever, just get them out of the way so I don't have to look at them. It's not that I don't want to look at solar panels, but I'd rather look at the deer walking by. That's just me. Anyway, folks, that's all I've got for you today. I'll drop another video right here for you to check out. Thanks for watching, folks. The old jar hit out.